Hello, everybody, and this is game number two of the GOM TV Classic Season 4 matchup between Yellow and Haya. This is the round of eight, and Haya took game number one and a really well played TVZ trying to deal with Yellow's uh, lurker play and uh, not very, going very standard, but Python. Um, it is a little bit of an older map, which may not quite meet the metagame of uh, current TVZ type maps. So uh, I, I'm assuming that game number two is going to be in Tau Cross, and we will know very shortly here. And it looks like the crowd is ready to go. So are the uh, players. The production crew is ready, and Yellow is looking very upset here. Uh, and Haya, he's just so concentrated right now, knowing that he wants to take it and win the GOM TV Classic. It's been years since we've seen one, and it would just be really cool for for Haya to take take uh, gold. The countdown has completed, and we are on the map Fighting Spirit, the greatest four-player map ever. Super balanced, and that is why everybody plays it. We can hear the, the fans yelling fighting in the background for both these players. And it looks like the Storm Zerg is going to be spawning at the bottom right-hand corner at the 5 o'clock position. That's going to leave our Terran player higher to be spawning at that 1 o'clock position at the top right. And look at that, showing tons of love for the StarCraft players. We see all sorts of signs and hearts and, and full stands of girls and guys. Almost more girls than guys filled in the stands. And that's when you know that a game is doing really well, is when you have stands filled with women. So the this, this StarCraft scene is thriving in Korea. StarCraft 1 is going really well. And look at that gift. So <laughs> some awesome dancing here. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on with that one. But okay, uh, it looks like that's the yellow should get a gold dance. And uh, more signs there. I'm just uh, imagining that says, I wish yellow would play StarCraft without a shirt on. Which we all wish he would, you know. Um, but... These guys, they just put on more and more clothes when they get into the booth. Jackets, sweaters, all sorts of outfits. We've seen Bisu go into uh, a booth with a sweater, which is um, <laughs> more than amazing. So, the barracks coming down for Haya. And in this TVZ matchup, again, like I said, Muta's off, off two to three bases is pretty standard. I, it's it's so important to get mutas out and use your your awesome control to get those bio forces at bay. But for Haya, I I don't imagine he'd do anything else but go for bio because he's so good with it. Uh, you know, if he goes for for four racks or six racks, I think that he can really take out his Zerg opponent here and a hidden drone, which only just will delay the scouting a little bit further. Here uh, is the SCV going to get pulled back. No, Hyatt wants to go and confirm that there is an actual base here. And so we see how far the SCB actually got rallied down to the bottom right hand corner. And uh, is he going to go back and check that natural yet? Because obviously at this point it would be pretty awkward if there was an additional hatchery for our Zerg player Yella. An extractor going down too, which means guess what? Uh, unless he's going fast speed, which I really doubt it is going to be uh, it is going to be Lair Tech and he is going to go for that Spire Spire play where he uses Mutas to the best of his capabilities uh, A bunker is always really good choice on a fighting spirit built at that natural It's something that will help him deal with that link pressure Especially when it's known that there aren't that many links on the map a uh, good group of six links is, is pretty stout And if they got inside of the base it, They could they could take out a, a few SCVs and definitely halt some of the mining that I could focus on With that additional command center though with the bunker at the front highest economy is gonna be really strong Which is where mutas are gonna come into play you really want to try and get those mutas and, and, and get heavy attacks on top of those SCVs. Try and dwindle that count lower and hopefully stall that tech until you can get a third base and start transitioning into that awesome lurker play. But going lurker first the way yellow did, it, it gave Haya way too much time to build up in game one. Using an additional supply depot at that choke point is a really good choice too. It's going to make it harder for Lynx to do run buys and once mutas and Lynx come in, there, there was actually a video that we had to do to um, to be able to cast for GOM TV. And it was a Flash versus uh, J-Dong game in the Season 1 Finals. 
And Jadong obviously went on to win the gold in the Season 1 GOV TV Classic. But it was really cool the way he won game number two, the one that we had to cast, because he went in with a really good uh, Muta harassment after early on Ling harass. The, the Lings did a, a decent job of maintaining, um, of keeping that economy low and, and forcing the command center to lift at the natural. By the time Mutas got there, uh, it was just constant Mutas, constant Mutas. We're dwindling down the ground forces of fire bats, and all of a sudden the Lings could run in because there were no fire bats, and he just destroyed that base. So really fun game. If you guys haven't checked it out, go and see the old GOM TV classics. They are made available to you, um, courtesy of GOM TV. So uh, just enjoy those as much as you can when you are out of StarCraft because you may not you may not have any more StarCraft to watch immediately after this game. So this is a best of three. Yellow could make his uh, he could make his way back. There could be an additional game after this if he is able to defeat Haya. But we're waiting to see what kind of attacks are are going to come out of Yellow. It's just, uh, it really is such a waiting game right now with the way these uh, players went. You know, just a very uh, tanky or turtley style play for Haya right now. He's just seeing his base, focusing on economy, and, and, and building units. And it looks like he finally hit that critical amount. And, uh, you know, not even too far into this game. If he even pushes, if he even fakes to push out with this amount of units, it's going to force static defenses for him. Yellow, because if Yellow does not build any Sunkins, by the time Haya gets there, he could walk waltz his way in there. So it is enough to mess with the Zerg's head. Meanwhile, the turret, the engineering bay is going to be up and completed very shortly here, which means turrets can be built to deal with the mutilus harassment. And you really do need a certain amount of turrets and and in exact locations in order to be able to push out with your bio forces and not have to worry about bringing them back to defend inside your main and natural moving out with these marines and medics how good is yellow's mutilus micro i i wonder how how well practiced he is for this uh, no one really is, is quite competent on how good yellow is because he doesn't stream a lot he's not well he doesn't really stream at all so no no one knows uh his current condition Obviously, he's still he's still putting up decent micro. And so far, he's, he hasn't looked too terrible. He does have that third base. And the Hydralos Den is... A, is no, it's not... I, I was going to say it's a little bit late, but it seems like it's on time. Um, generally, by the time a uh, Terran player will get to that third base, uh, which is going to be as far away from your opponent as possible, there will be a Lurker there to guard on top of the ramp. Which is going to force scans. It's going to force uh, the Terran to take its time to get up that inside that base. But this Muta Micro is not that great. It looks like uh, Unit already died, and a couple of them are really low on health. It's going to take a while before uh, there will be regeneration on top of those Mutas, and uh, that's not going to cut it for Yellow. He's going to need to make sure he focuses on his Micro as perfect as possible. Meanwhile, we can see from Haya he hasn't really had to stim too much either. Yeah, his units, now he finally is stimming his units. So he's getting ready to push across that bridge because he wants to make sure he can take out that mining third so quickly here. Because if Hi if Hi can force yellow to two bases, it's near impossible for the Zerg opponent to win. And the scan here. Okay, so the lurkers are behind. And I should have gone with my instinct on this because you would expect the lurkers to be morphing here. And he might want to morph those hydralists to block the ramp as soon as possible here. Trying to defend on top of the ramp, though, if he loses any of the Hydralists, it's going to put him into an even worse position here. But picking off those Marines, getting the count really low. Oh my goodness. Really good micro from, from Yellow. He, he was able to force Haya back. All his units are gone. And now Haya, he's going to have to re-macro and start focusing on a new attack here. I cannot believe by not morphing a Lurker, he was actually able to save that third. Maybe Yellow is seeing something in the metagame that we don't see. Uh, he is really an intelligent player, but uh, what is it? What is it? Okay, so he's only mining with two drones from that gas specifically here, which uh, I think that the observer is pointing out. It's going to put him further behind. He won't be able to keep that mute account higher. 
and here comes the harassment. He found a way to sneak his meters in, and they're inside of the main base. He might be able to pick off that, that the building SCV here. Only a few Marines, and he's not going to choose to pick them off, even though there are no medics here. And he's trying to poke his way in here, but there's way too many turrets. Why is he going for this attack? This is suicidal for his mutilus, and he's going to lose them. You can see uh, Yellow's face. He really shouldn't have gone for that attack, but even as he was doing it, he really knew that there was no way to pull his units back and he should have had to go in for that attack here. So losing those mutas was quite huge because now he has no air dominance. He can't attack units as they push across the map. All he has are lings. The army count is so low for Yellow. Meanwhile, Haya, he is about to get that science vessel attack, the add-on control tower to that starport has just uh, finished and got completed which means the science vessels can start getting themselves put into production here the factory finishing up means that he can start pushing out with tanks too and now we see that those three hydras decided they wanted to become lurkers and live their life out as uh, spiny turtle units underground uh, very very uh, antisocial the lurkers are but I heard they're great when they uh, when they all attend the party so the Scourge are moving out and looking for some, some science vessel fodder. And uh, he's not going to find any right away. Science vessels are still in production from the starport. But there are plenty of tanks. And so I bet he's wishing the Scourge can crash down and just attack units on the ground. But I think Blizzard made some sort of explosive ground unit um, in, in their expansion game. But let's not mention that. You guys are watching the GOM TV Season 4 Classic. And uh, I welcome you as we, this is the round of eight. This is the second uh, group of players, Yellow versus Haya earlier on. It was a ZVP, Zero versus Pusan. So we're getting just all varieties of matchups here. Really good from both uh, from uh, those two, two first games between Zero and Pusan were very exciting. But Yellow versus Haya, that first one, it got cut off a little bit at the end. And unfortunately, it seemed like Haya just had the better strategy on Python. I think Fighting Spirit is a better map for Yellow. It's showing, it's allowing him to play a little bit more to his style. And uh, Haya, he does definitely has so much experience on Fighting Spirit that it's just like, it's all mechanical at this point. Like, you get so used to build orders, you don't really have to count anything, you don't have to notice anything, you just kind of know. It's it's like speaking a language fluently by the time you, you get comfortable with this map. And the lurkers are coming in here, trying to pick off a ton of lings as they try and make their way across. There were no medics with those with those bio forces, because most of them have already made their way uh, over to that natural base. And it looks like Hyatt just wants to pound his way through that bridge and onto that natural of yellow. Zerg forces are going to have to be very careful here. Defend as best as possible. And the sieging of those tanks right outside that that bridge. It's going to be really hard here. These lurkers are going to need to get lifted. He needs to bring them back right away. Irradiate going down in the first one. A second one is uh, going to get hit by that splash fire on top of the sunken. I don't know if Yellow has the forces to deal with this again. He does have Defiler tech out though. And Dark Swarm is going to allow him to stream those Zerglings in very quickly here. The, the Marines, they're getting ready to move in here. Now they've stimmed out. Haya is ready for his attack. The tanks in the background here. A Dark Swarm on top of his uh, immediate units here. His static defenses to keep him alive a little bit longer. That way he can macro up the army he needs. But he already has seven by, uh, barracks. And double, uh, double upgrades at the same time. That's going to be uh, really useful. He only has plus one attack so far, but Hyatt's is going to have plus two, plus one, especially with that science facility. That's going to allow him to get those later attack uh, upgrades. And so he will be able to get tier three upgrades immediately following his tier two. That's the best part about getting science vessel attack is that it also allows you to get those upgrades for the Marines. That way your bio forces are just infinitely stronger here. Dealing with the, uh, the Zergling attacks, I don't think that the Zergs have quite the um, upgrade count. So, uh, Yellow, it looks like he's going to want to try and take a 4th base, sitting over at that 7 o'clock position uh, on Fighting Spirit. This is a, a good place for, him, place for him to take a 4th base, and it's going to be really important for him to, to try and get further ahead on Economy. And I think that Haya is probably going to want to take a 3rd base, too, behind this. He can, he can build an additional command center. Going for another defense here. 
A nice takeout on that side spell, so the Scourge were able to pick it off pretty quickly. And it's going to force the Bioforces back because High really doesn't want to take bad engagements. He knows that he's in a good position here to to stay tit for tat with his Zerg opponent. But there is no way or no reason, no logical reason for him to just lose his forces and have to try and re macro up against Yellow. He does not want to get behind when he has a pretty solid. Uh, I, I think he does have a pretty solid lead right now with the amount of units that he has. But Dark Swarm here, Lurker's in a good position. Seems like uh, seems like the Marines really don't have too many medics with them. And a Plague, it looks like a Yellow, he does have Plague available to him and he's been able to keep the health really low. There's not that many medics and it looks like, oh wow. Okay, so one of the Scourge getting taken out, it looks like one more hit might have done it. The Science Vessel could have been, could have been taken off this Earth or off this planet. Tons of forces of poised to attack from this natural base. But of course with that Nidus Canal, it's going to allow him to get his units over to the bottom left very quickly so he can defend here. And he's going to need another Dark Swarm as these units try and stim their way in. They are going to get the units very quickly. The Lurkers are going to have to get pushed back. It seems like Yellow is going to have to abandon that uh, base at his natural of the uh, bottom left location. The Science Vessels are doing a good job of adding a Radiate to the units here. And Yellow, he's in a very difficult position. He lost his fourth base, which means that he does not have quite the mining that the Terran player will have. High, it looks like he's expanding to the 12 o'clock location. He's expanding to the uh, 11 o'clock location, which means his economy is going to be far superior to the Zerg player. Yellow, he's falling uh, so far behind because he's not able to harass and he's not able to keep the army count low for the Terran player. This is just a, a really good display of, of play from our Terran player Haya. He, he is showing that his Marines with the plus one, plus two are so strong here. It's going to be really difficult for Yellow to, to hang in here any longer, especially with these additional bases. The Radiates are coming down too, and a huge move out for Yellow. It looks like he doesn't want to deal with these forces any longer, trying to take them out. The Lurkers are reinforcing that location here, which is going to push uh, Haya back one more time. Now, how useful are these uh, are these upgrades going to pay off? Because we know that that in TVZ, it's so useful to start uh, switching over to Mac once you get into that mid to late game. But why why do that at this point? He has so many barracks here; he can reinforce and build units up so quickly. And it looks like an, another fourth base is going to be taken uh, out over at that six o'clock location, which means Yellow is going to be in a, a more trouble again, as he won't be able to re macro quite as well with the without the strong economy but looking at it here he has uh, 11 you know 1400 minerals and a thousand gas which means he's not macroing too heavily it, his macro is just clearly slipping here he's got 10 scourge and one lurker <laughs> and no defilers so uh, pretty interesting here meanwhile Haya he's having a constant stream of income but but spending it pretty adequately at the same time with six science vessels it's gonna be really hard for him to uh, it's going to be really hard for a Zerg player yellow to, to deal with uh, the critical amount of science vessels. I think once you get to uh, 11 science vessels, you can you can not really compete with that unless you get massive amounts of Scourge hits. But, but the cows are out. Ultralists have been built. And these Ultralists are going to be hoping to get tons of nice hits off on top of these units. We're seeing plus two Carapace is already finished, which means it's going to be even harder to take out the Ultralist with that plus two Carapace. And if the armor upgrade of plus four is finished too from that Ultralist um, Cavern, then it will, it will play out really well for Yellow here. But he might end up losing this base at the bottom left. He's going to have to defend it really well here. But where are the Ultralists? A couple inside of his base already. Irradiate is going down. He's going to want to try and keep his bio forces alive while Irradiate just slowly takes down the health of the Ultralists. But uh, Yellow, he's trying to push out here. In fact, his Lurkers are, were in a good position to keep those bio forces away. Um, irradiates were wasted on top of on the uh, ultralis instead of the lurkers which means that higher really couldn't effectively push up that ramp uh, not a real clear idea of what the supply count is but 67 marines built for Haya. <laughs> that's an incredibly large amount of bio forces Meanwhile, seven Ultras are on the field for our Zerg player, and they're getting ready to come in here again. The Zerglings plus these Ultralists are dwindling down the forces again, and it looks like uh, 
Seven Marines were taken out. That's it. Okay, so the Marine count is only uh, is still at 60 from 67. So even though it looked like there was another set of carnage here, uh, Haya is remacking so quickly. The bio forces sitting over at six, that six o'clock and move out. I wonder if he's going to try and go for some drop play. Getting a few drop ships in the mix would be really useful for the Terran player to be to catch the uh, Zerg player off guard. I really love seeing drop ship play late in the game for the Terran opponent because that's when it starts being more affordable and you can really uh, do some heavy damage if you can pick off uh, you know just a whole slew of drones inside of a mineral line. It doesn't matter if you lose your dropship or those bio forces, you're going to re-macro that up pretty easily anyway here. And now we're seeing uh, yellow. It looked like he was like reaching really far across his, board, <laughs> his uh, keyboard here. I thought he was going to tap GG for some reason. And uh, it's definitely showing a lot of expression as as uh, he feels pressure of his terror opponent high up. Pushing himself back inside of this base again. It looks like more... more uh, uh, Lings are going to get picked off here. Dark Swarm comes out though, and there is an Ultras moving in here to try and take out these bio forces. The uh, there is a plague on top of those science vessels, so he can't get that science vessel count low. If he can get some scorch in there, there are no more Marines. So really good job here. But it looks like the stigma on these Marines from those uh, at that six o'clock location will clean up the Lings. And these Ultras unfortunately aren't able to clean it up either. The health, uh, the healing factor of those medics was just enough to keep those Marines alive. Another base taken by Haya though. Let's not emphasize any. Uh, let's not underemphasize how critical this is. Off uh, six bases, a Terran player is. Uh, meanwhile, Yellow, he's really sitting on on three bases, but he can't hold that main any longer. He can't mine from it too much longer here. It's it's gonna be down to possibly two bases, and so he's got to make something work here, which it's just not the case. Now, while we see that there's only 41 Marines left for a Terran opponent, it looks like the Mech Switch is on its way because 18 tanks are out. And so these uh, these factories are going to be, become more and more useful here, which is why he uh, he's building factories over at his uh, second main base, you could call it. Over at that 11 o'clock, he's going to start building the Mech forces from that left side. And uh, trying to do a little bit of attack here, this is all Yellow can really do. He needs to make sure he can try and take out some of these bases, uh, delete some of the mining here, but, oh, uh, you know, how much can he do? Another set of links and Ultralis coming in here. Wow, that Ultralis is just a god, though. Taking out six kills here, it is so hard to kill it off. He's got uh, plus five armor, so uh, really strong, really strong units here. And as he runs in, it looks like there's a lot of tanks to able to clean it up. 19 tanks now. Meanwhile, the side special account is up to 12. Exactly what I was saying earlier. If you have 11 science vessels, you're doing really good as a Terran player. And it looks like High has just been storing his science vessels. And now it's going to be a tank a science vessel attack. <laughs> and that is quite a lot of mech between the air and the ground. The Defiler eating some of its units, allowing it to use the consumability, get energy on it. That way he can use uh, Dark Swarm or Plague as he pleases. It looks like the Ultralist will die with the Radiate here. And he's and killing off a lot of his uh, neighboring Zergling units too. And look at that, a massive, <laughs> a massive Plague. But he's actually going into Eraser mode with his Science Vessel. The tanks and the Marines are moving down to that bottom left again it is the last mining location that really is important for yellow he's gonna have to defend right here using mutas he's actually one-shotting these science vessels and wow already taking out four science vessels five and it looks like uh, <laughs> the count just got brought down to half half the science vessels picking up pretty easily here and um, it, the, there's way too many marines defending these tanks he needs another plague to get off on those tanks and uh, the, the links at this point, they have the adrenal gland, gland upgrades. They, they are in the super crackling mode, which is going to allow them to take out the tanks very quickly here. But without the uh, plague, without Dark Swarm, he really can't get that damage done that he wants to on top of these mech units. Dark Swarm does come down. He is leapfrogging forward with his units here. Meanwhile, links are streaming up towards that uh, 12 o'clock base again. Unfortunately, there is a, a double group of Marines there to defend. So Haya, he really isn't bringing everything he has into this attack. And Yellow, he's smiling one more time here. I think that he realizes, well, he's going to lose this base. There are way too many tanks in here. And uh, now they're just going to A move up into that, uh, <laughs> that base. GG! 
And Yellow, he loses in the round of eight. Haya showing his good Terran play. Um, him and Zero are going to be advancing into the round of four. This is the GOM TV Classic Season 4, and we already have two players, a Terran player, uh, Haya, and our Zerg player, Zero, advancing. Unfortunately, Yellow, uh, probably the fan favorite today, is not able to advance, and um, hopefully we can see him in some more tournaments, and he's, he, he practices a little bit more, because he's very close to being uh, a pretty solid player. You can just see that it, it was just a little bit out of practice, but once he got into that late game, he, he didn't do horrible. He was able to macro really well. It was just a harassment by Haya. It's too good. So thank you guys. Have a good night. This is a Gone TV uh, Season 4 Classic Tournament of Brood War. I am BC Dagger on the microphone. And I hope you guys all take care.